Hey, what's up guys? Lewis here. How you guys doing? So a while back I posted a couple of photos from Voyage of the Little Mermaid on my Instagram account. A couple of you guys had a bunch of questions about the lens that I use, settings and all that fun stuff. So I thought today would be a good time to release the video that explains exactly that. Plus a bunch of other spots which are really good to get those cool night shots. Now without further ado, let's head back in time and head over to the Magic Kingdom. Let's go. Okay, as we come into this area of Fantasyland, there's a bunch of really cool spots that we can take photos from. So I'll walk you around a couple of them. Um, I came back during the day because uh, during the nighttime I actually couldn't see anything and I think it wasn't fair for you guys. So we're going to do these during the day and I'll show you the photos how they look at night. Now for starters, we're going to be using this tripod uh, because once we get to nighttime, we're going to be doing some night shots and obviously we need the tripod to do some long exposures. First lens I'm going to be using is actually this one, which is the 30 millimeter f1.4 which we're going to be using for the ride is that it's actually it's a prime lens and 1.4 uh, means that it's going to be letting in a lot of light really fast so it's good for dark rides for good performance and then the other lens that we're going to be using is this one which is another sigma lens which is the ultra wide uh, which is the 10 to 20 and this is what we're going to be using for the landscapes uh, shots and wide shots and stuff like that Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the settings for the night shots that we'll be taking. Now, first of all, uh, we want to make sure that our ISO is locked at ISO 100 and that our f-stop is at something that we want to, that we feel comfortable with. And I say that because there's two modes that we can use when shooting uh, these types of shots. Um, I like to use many times what is aperture mode, which is AV. And what I do is I usually put the aperture, um, lock it at a certain, certain number, usually the widest, and then ISO, I'll lock it to 100. And that way I make sure I get the best quality possible and what the camera is going to do is obviously going to try to adjust the shutter speed to whatever speed it is up to 30 seconds to be able to, to get the best quality of photo now again we need a tripod for this um, as you can see I don't have the tripod here but I will be putting it up when we start doing those night shots and another thing that we're going to do as for the focusing and the metering we're going to be using uh, center 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 weighted average and what that is that it takes the center mostly the center of the screen and adjust the, uh, the, the the exposure for that and different from spot metering which is what we were using for uh, for the ride so you can use that or you can go also with something else like um, like a partial meeting or metering and or even a validator evaluative metering uh, those also work as well when shooting these landscape shots now you can also do bracketing um, which is a, a tool where you take three photos and it automatically takes one underexposed one normal exposed and one overexposed now I did a whole video of that I'm gonna actually put a link but that's another thing that we're gonna be doing today and I just like to take usually a couple shots just to be safe so um, it's all a question about preference uh, but that's usually my go-to setting again I like to shoot it you know usually aperture mode um, ISO 100 and I let the uh, shutter speed be um, set by the camera automatically and I usually put the f-stop as wide as possible. First spot which is actually one that you can even use for happily ever after which is awesome and the good thing of this spot is that it's actually near the air conditioning exit as well as some good sound system because it actually the sound you can hear it coming off from the rocks and the spot is right here. And the good thing of this spot is that you'll actually see the fireworks exploding right here on the top of Prince Eric's Castle and you got a really cool wide shot. And if you're doing long exposure and the water is moving, you would be able to get that really cool glossy effect. Okay, the next shot is obviously with the Little Mermaid in the frame, which is also another really good shot if you want to try shooting it with Happily Ever After, which is right here. Now be aware that you do not want to block the entrance. You want to stand somewhat in front of here, the rock. That way you get the Little Mermaid in this frame and the fireworks will actually be over here and some of them actually on this area over here. So Now another spot that is actually good is actually this way, which is where you get Prince Eric's castle in the back as well as the Little Mermaid. Okay, the next one is actually inside the queue line and we're going to be going inside the regular line, not the fast pass line. There's a couple of really cool shots that we can take in here. The first being actually shooting upwards in an angle, which is like this, which is where these two ropes are. You can actually set your tripod and you won't be bugging anybody here in the entrance and you shoot upwards like this. 
And the cool thing of this is that if you, you'll, these lights will be on and it gives a really cool glaring effect uh, with the Eric's Castle on the top. Another one, it actually just turn around, is actually right here. And what I like of this one is that you actually have um, where Gaston meets, which is right here, and you got this whole walkway. Now, if you're able to get it when there's nobody in the frame, it's really cool because it looks um, it looks very uh, cozy because you got the walkway going towards the uh, towards the inside of the ride. Okay, moving forward, the next one is actually on the first bridge, like I like to call it, and it's actually right here. And the cool thing of this spot that you actually, if you're using in a, a really wide angle like I'm using on these shots, you actually got the boat of Prince Eric there, uh, you know, on the on the beach, and you got the water obviously in the back. And again, if you're doing long exposure, you're gonna get that really cool glossy uh, look to it. Again, let me show you exactly where I'm at. Now for this, make sure that you're gonna have to have a tripod which is pretty tall, or if you wanna have a Joby Gorilla Pod and hanging up of here, it's uh, up to you what you wanna use. This is the first shot here. Okay, so the next one is actually right here to the right of these lamps and you can see you get the whole Prince Eric's castle right here. Now if you shoot, um, if you don't want these, you know, these bushes in the way, you can actually move a little bit this way, but you just got to be careful with the light here. If you want to include into your shot, great. If not, just shoot lower in an angle like this and you'll be able to get it out of your shot. Here's the shot out looks from this area. There's one other spot which is great for photos, but you can see there's a long line right now. So I'm going to see if I can put it on Google Maps and I'll show you exactly where the spot is. Now the cool thing on this spot, you actually have to shoot pretty high to be able to um, get the photos. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the camera and the settings that we're going to be using for shooting the ride. Now, as for the lens, I got my um, f1.4 and again if you've seen my previous videos you know that the f-stop the widest possible uh, meaning the lowest number provides the most light into the lens as fast as possible which is great uh, for low light performance and darker situations now i am going to be shooting in manual mode and the reason for that is that i want to lock down uh, the setting of the shutter speed as well as the f-stop and then i'm going to let the leave the iso as auto and what's going to happen is that the camera is going to try to adjust the iso depending on the on the situation if it's dark or not and in case of here putting 60 on 1 60th of a second actually tries to minimize the shake on the camera now i may go up you know something like 80 or sometimes even 100 depending on the situation and then as for the autofocus mode I'm going to be using Owl Servo and what that does is as soon as I press the camera shutter halfway it's going to start focusing and if I leave it pressed it's going to continuously focus on whatever we're trying to take a photo of. Now very important one thing that I did do because I already did this ride once and I failed so I did set my um, uh, metering to the center which in this case it's spot metering which is right in the middle because what happens since it's a dark ride usually they have spotlights or the items in the middle are what's lit up and not what's around it so spot metering what's going to do is it wherever in the center of the frame I have it to focus it's where it's going to try to adjust the settings now that is good and bad in certain things because good because if it's uh, something where the situation is dark but the thing in the middle is lit it'll be able to adjust and it won't go crazy trying to adjust for the whole frame now bad if though we're trying to get something that's the whole frame um, this will try to um, only do the center and it may be blown out Okay, so we just got out of the ride. It is uh, getting nighttime, and the first thing that we're going to do is actually take a shot of this guy here, which is um, Ariel's dad. And we're just going to be a little bit considerate for the people taking photos, but we'll set up the tripod and hopefully do a long exposure. Contrary to uh, popular belief, um, when I come and visit the park for photos, I'm not here all the time. I'm actually here for a couple of hours. Um, 
I'll come in with a mission, you know, I'll get a fast pass for one of the rides and take photos of the ride as well as the area. And so it's not here that I stay all day because that's something that everybody asks me all the time. So that's it here from Magic Kingdom. Hopefully enjoyed these clips and spots that I've showed you today. And hopefully you can use them and practice when you come here to Magic Kingdom, the Fantasyland, the Little Mermaid and beyond. Now again, make sure that you uh, tweak the photos a little bit. Don't just necessarily copy what you're seeing here. Make it fun, uh, put your touch to it, because that's what makes Disney photography fun. Okay, so without further ado, I want to say thank you for watching, and until then guys, stay awesome. See ya. Good night.